Okay. Now there might be a couple of other things we need to do, but let's uh, let's move on. The next thing we want to do is be able to stop and start the game. So, or the test, should I say? So I'm just going to take that, and I'm going to add it to our start button. So when I press this, test start stop is going to be called, and the way we'll tell if a game if the test is running or not um, is whether or not the icon is set to 6000 which we know is the play button and therefore it's not running or the stop button in which case we know it is running which is 6001 so if the icon of button start is 6000 then else and if okay so in this case we want to start the game because it is not running so the first thing we want to do is set the icon of the button okay so now it will be in the in the stop state so the button will look like it stopped um, we want to uh, start the game so what we want to do is show a nice countdown so we're gonna go and call this function to start our game, test countdown. Now if our game is running, what we want to do is reset um, the game, so we call test reset. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is implement this nice countdown. It'd be good to be able to go 3, 2, 1 and then into the test, just to give people a chance to you know, get ready. So the way I've done that is I've actually just created, uh, I've dragged on another field. I've called it countdown and I've, I've made it nice and, and big and white. And um, so in order to implement that countdown, what we need to do is when um, we start our test, we need to put three into that. So put three into field countdown, show field countdown. And then finally, make sure that we hide it on reset. Okay. Now, also what we want to do is start the timer. And the way we're going to do that is using send messages. And we can send test countdown to this script to me in one second. So that's a great way of implementing a timer. You say go and do this in one second and so we'll we'll go and do test countdown in one second so the first thing we want to do is subtract one second subtract one from field countdown so that will um, decrement our counter next thing we need to do is check whether or not it's zero if field countdown is zero, then we know the timer has ended, then else and if. So if the timer hasn't ended, all we want to do is send test count countdown to me again in one second so that it removes one more from our count. If it is zero, then we know our countdown is finished and the first thing we need to do is hide the count and we want to go ahead and start our test. Now because we want to randomize this test a little bit, we don't want to make it predictable, we don't want to um, show the white disk uh, in the same way every time. So what we'll do is we'll send a delayed test start message and we'll do that again using the send command. We use test start and we use the random function. So we'll give it 1500 milliseconds. So that means the test could start instantly or it could start in one and a half seconds time or any time between and it will be random every time uh, the test starts. Okay, so let's just give that a quick test. Three, two, one. Perfect. Okay, so let's move on to test start. What do we want to do when we start our test? Well, firstly we want to record uh, the the milliseconds when um, we start the test. So put the milliseconds 
into, and we called it s test start s test start. We also want to show the circle, um, so we'll go show graphic circle. Let's give that a quick test. Three, two, one, and then a random period of time. So that was quite short. Let's see if it's a bit longer. Perfect. So our test seems to be working. Now what we want to do is end the test in a random period of time. So let's send test end to me in. Let's do the same. The test can be up to a second and a half long. Okay, and what do we do when the test ends? Well, we want to hide graphic circle and we want to record the end time. So put the milliseconds into S test test end. Okay. <coughs> Okay, and the final thing we want to do is do a test complete where we show the results. Now, we don't want to do it instantly because they might not have finished doing their shake yet. So, again, let's send um, test complete. And this time, not in a random time. Let's actually do it in 1500 milliseconds or a second and a half just to give them a chance to um, catch up. So, just forgot the in. Okay, now now we need to handle P motion. So if P motion is shake, then so all we want to do when they shake is record the milliseconds when they perform their shake. So put the milliseconds into S um, shake start, which I think is what we called it at the top, yeah, S shake start, and basically the exact same thing for the end. If P motion is shake, then put the milliseconds into S shake end. <coughs> okay, the final thing we want to do is handle this test complete message, which we receive once we know all of the testing has been performed, and what we want to do is simply reset the play button and update the results. So we'll start by resetting the play button. We'll um, set the the icon of button start to 6000. And now comes the calculations. The first thing we want to do is calculate the reaction time 1. And we do that by um, checking the start time against the first shake time. So we'll go put s test start minus S shake start and it's in milliseconds so let's divide that by 1000 and we will also round it up to three decimal places and we'll put that into a variable T start reaction. Now we want to do the exact same thing with the end reaction so let's just copy that line and we'll change it to end a shake end and s end reaction. So now what we'll do is we'll um, calculate the final value, the final reaction value. Now T star reaction and T end reaction could be negative or positive numbers depending on whether or not the user was faster than the white or slower than the display of the white circle. So in our next calculation we need to make sure we use absolute values. 